In this video, we'll look at the topic of source separation using non-negative matrix factorization. What is blind signal separation or source separation? Blind signal separation refers to separating out a set of source signals from a given set of mixed signals with no prior knowledge about the sources. Typical applications of blind signal separation algorithms include solving problems such as the cocktail party problem. That is, given an audio containing multiple speakers speaking at the same time, how do you separate out the speech of each individual speaker? Yet other applications include automatic music transcription and text document analysis. In this video, we will look at the much simpler problem of separating out the sounds corresponding to different musical instruments from an audio signal containing their mixture using the technique of non-negative matrix factorization. Musical sounds are much much easier to handle in comparison to speech as their spectral structure remains constant with time. Other techniques used for source separation include principal component analysis, vector quantization, singular value decomposition, and independent component analysis. In this video, we will use the technique of non-negative matrix factorization or NMF. Consider a matrix V of size M cross N. V is non-negative if every element of V is non-negative. NMF refers to factorizing V as a product of two matrices W and H, each of which is non-negative. It's worth noting that such a factorization is not unique and we'll address this issue later on in the video. From the column picture of matrix multiplication, each column of V can be written as a linear combination of the columns of W, with the columns of W acting as source components and the columns of H acting as encodings. This is, however, only an approximate factorization. That implies that we require metrics to determine the quality of our approximation. For this, we shall use the Frobenius norm and the generalized kullback leibler divergence, where A and B are any two general matrices and Aij and Bij are their ijth elements respectively. In the case of our problem of NMF, these loss functions are equal to zero exactly when V equals the matrix product WH. While these loss functions are convex in either W or H, they are not convex in both W and H. Therefore, we shall use iterative algorithms to minimize these loss functions. Here, we will use the extremely popular multiplicative update rules. We will obtain these by minimizing the Frobenius norm for a single column vector of the matrix B. Clearly, f of h is quadratic in h. Its Taylor expansion has at most second order terms. We also define an auxiliary function g of h, ht that equals f of h when h equals ht and is greater than it otherwise. After defining g, we initialize h0 and at the t plus 1 iteration choose that h which minimizes g of h, ht. F of h is non-increasing under such an update and keeps decreasing until ht plus 1 is the local minimum of g of h, ht. This proof can be written out formally quite easily. For the Frobenius norm, we define a function g with at most second order terms. To show that g is an auxiliary function, we consider the difference g of h, ht minus f of h. This amounts to showing that k of ht minus w transpose w is positive semi-definite. For this, we consider the matrix M, then V1 is a positive eigenvector of Q with unity eigenvalue. Then, using the Frobenius Perron theorem, we can show that K minus W transpose W is positive semi-definite. Check out the link in the description below for more on the Frobenius Perron theorem. The update rule for H can be determined by obtaining the gradient of the function G and setting it to zero. The updates can be written quite conveniently in matrix form. Similarly, for the generalized KL divergence, we define a suitable auxiliary function and use the expectation maximization algorithm to obtain the multiplicative updates, which can be written quite neatly in the matrix form. For our algorithm, we initialize W and H with the absolute value of Gaussian noise. Then we update W, subsequently we update H, we keep iterating until the cost function converges. However, NMF is not unique. Trivial solutions do exist. Further, if W and H offer a factorization, then WQ and Q inverse H also offer a factorization. This is not an issue if Q is a monomial matrix, that is a permuted diagonal matrix, as the rows of W and the columns of H are suitably swapped and scaled in order to obtain the same representation. However, non-monomial matrices Q are a cause for concern. In order to avoid this, we impose priors on the matrices W and H. Since the columns of H form time-dependent encodings of the components in W, we impose priors only on the matrix H. The first of these is temporal continuity. By minimizing a suitably normalized loss function, we ensure that any large changes in the time-dependent gains from one frame to the next are penalized and thus retain temporal information. Further, we also impose sparseness. In case any two sources have overlapping spectra, sparseness ensures that one is written as the sum of the other and a residual. This has been shown to improve performance. 
Once these losses are added to the generalized KL divergence, their gradients need to be computed and the update rules modified in order to obtain W and H. Please note that the Python code for all the work described subsequently is available at the link in the description below. That being said, we will now separate out the sources from this audio containing seven different instruments. From the audio, we extract the short time Fourier transform or the STFT. However, this is a complex valued matrix. In order to perform NMF, we separate it out into its magnitude and phase spectrograms. We retain the phase spectrogram for later use. This comprises our matrix B. We will now try to factorize this using the three sets of multiplicative update rules we've seen so far. One of the aforementioned iterative algorithms is used to obtain the matrices W and H. The magnitude spectrogram of the ith component is obtained as an outer product between the ith column of W and the ith row of H. It's multiplied by the phase spectrogram of the original signal to obtain the complex spectrogram. The corresponding time domain signal is obtained by taking the ISTFT of the complex spectrogram. One of the seven separated components obtained by minimizing the Frobenius norm alone sounds as follows. Same source obtained by minimizing the generalized KL divergence sounds like this. This audio sounds much better as the generalized KL divergence mimics the logarithmic response of the human ear and being linear in the input captures more of the low energy signal components. Finally, we consider the generalized KL divergence with temporal continuity and sparseness criteria. Clearly, the third audio is the best of the three. This verifies that the proposed algorithm is highly effective as compared to the pre-existing ones. The quality of a reconstruction can be measured by determining the SNR of the reconstructed source with respect to the original source. By averaging this over all the sources, we get our final metric. This is found to be highest for the proposed algorithm. More details regarding this algorithm can be found in the following papers. Finally, we hope you like this video and thank you for watching.